Okay. Ah, filming again. What is this like? <laughs> how have I forgotten how this works? Right, let's just get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah. You may have seen some other videos from me this year, but this is actually the first video I'm filming in 2020. All of those other ones were pre-filmed. Movie magic, everything is a lie, all of that good stuff. But now I'm back and I'm genuinely like, how do I talk to a camera? I thought because all of my video ideas were spent on Vlognica, if you haven't already caught up on Vlognica, like, what are you doing in your life? No, I'm joking, you probably have more important things to do, it's fine. <laughs> Um, I thought I'd do a Q and A. It's this channel's first Q and A. Isn't that exciting? And I've kind of done things a little bit differently for this one. I mean, it's not that dramatically different. It's still a Q and A, but I've organized the questions. Did you think <laughs> it would be anything else? So I asked for your questions on Instagram about anything that you wanted to know. And these are the categories that I've put them in. So I've selected some of my favorites. A lot of people are asking similar questions. So hopefully this covers some of your interests. So we have YouTube and then some advice. And then this category of questions is give Hannah a crisis. So they're the kinds of questions that make me freak out a little bit, but that's fine. We're gonna go there anyway. And then some lifestyle questions, and then some culture and entertainment questions, and then right at the end to make sure that you stay and I get that watch time. We have most of the burning questions that you had, which is about the wedding and my relationship. <laughs> So there you go, you have to stick around to the end to hear my answers to all of those questions. Before we begin though, I wanted to let you know that I'm currently running a special offer over on my Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically this platform where you can financially support some of your favorite creators in all of their creative endeavors. So I use my Patreon to build a community of curious, like-minded, people and they support my sex education channel and my podcast doing it which is all about sex and relationships and various other things and with the special offer if you are a patron whether an old patron or a new patron who signs up before the third of February, then you get a special common room pin. So my Patreon community, the Discord like chat room channel that we all have together is called The Common Room. It's a cool place. It's a cool place to hang out on the internet. So if you sign up or you already are a patron by the 3rd of February, then you'll get sent out a cool little pin and then you can wear it or put it on your things. And then if you see someone wearing it, you can be like, ah, you in the club. Much appreciated, thanks so much to my patrons. And I really wanna be doing these special offers like every six months or so. So if you have any requests for future special offers where I just give you stuff, let me know. Okay, on to the Q and the A-ing. So the first category is YouTube. What was the first ever video you put on YouTube? So there's two answers to this. The first ever video that I actually uploaded to YouTube was a video of me doing capoeira. It was from a batizado when I was like a teenager and a batizado is like the ceremony where you get your belt. I can't remember which belt it was that I was getting, but that is why my YouTube channel is called Hannah Girasol. Like if you find my old username. Girasol means sunflower in Portuguese and it was my capoeira nickname. And I created the YouTube channel just as a place to upload this video that I had of me playing capoeira. However, when I then got into YouTube, and vlogging and all of that stuff, I deleted that video. I didn't even download it. I don't even have that video anymore. It's gone forever. And then the first ever video that I posted on this channel as a, hello, I'm trying to be a YouTuber now, was me trying to cook spaghetti bolognese. I basically wanted to start making videos and I also needed to learn how to cook and I didn't want to talk about myself. Oh, how times have changed. <laughs> and so by doing something, by cooking, it kind of took the attention away from me and on the task at hand. That video is also now private or unlisted or something, but maybe if patrons <laughs> request it, I could do a little playlist for patrons of all of my old, old privated videos and you guys could have access to that. As a YouTuber, how do you find a way to balance work and personal life? I think one of the ways that I'm able to do this is because my partner isn't a YouTuber and so a lot of my personal life just isn't on the internet at all. He's not even on social media, so 
that's quite nice. But I'm quite strict with myself in that even though I'm freelance and I could work 24 seven if I liked, I don't. I pretty much give myself like a nine to five, but it's not really a nine to five. It's more like an eight to six generally is my working day. And then evenings and weekends for me are for fun, for Dan, for friends, for hobbies, for whatever. I balance it by just compartmentalizing my time. <laughs> do you have many male followers slash viewers? Yes, I do. Not so much on this channel. This channel is about 85% female, which is kind of expected, but on my sex education YouTube channel and on my Instagram, it's about 70, 75% female. So there is a large chunk of male viewers. However, when it comes to certain videos, certain viral videos about my boobs, about bras, about anything to do with my chest, they are usually watched by about 90% male. Oh, and the retention rate on those videos is dog shite. So, hmm. Hashtag not all men. <sighs> anyway, on to the next category, advice because I'm super qualified to give advice. Do you know what qualifies me to give advice? The fact that you guys ask me for it and you trust me. Built a relationship where you feel like you trust me with this and so I take that very seriously. How do you keep your sex life alive? I wasn't sure whether this was a personal question about how I do it personally or if it was a advice question. If it is an advice question, I would advise you to read this book. Where is it? Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski, The Surprising New Science That Will Transform Your Sex Life. This is an amazing book when it comes to sex drives, mismatched desire, how to manage that in relationships with um, partners who like want different things. And then my second piece of advice, which is actually how I do it, how I keep my personal sex life alive, is by managing expectations. Holy shit. All satisfaction, all happiness in life can be solved or dealt with, I believe, currently at this point in my life, so don't quote me on this in 10 years time, is managing expectations. And it also has to be personal expectations. You have to really break down, okay, what makes a good, happy, healthy sex life? There are certain things that maybe we're like, these are essential. So consent, that is like the basics. But in terms of like how often you should be having sex or what type of sex you should be having, all of those things, we feel an immense amount of pressure from outside of what is normal. There's no such thing. So for me, how I've, what was the question again? <laughs> so for me, how I keep my sex life alive is by Dan and I talking about what our expectations are. Like, how often do we want to be having sex? What kind of sex do we want to be having? Why do we want to have sex? Like, what actually is important to us? And going from there, rather than thinking, oh my God, we're not having sex as much as what magazines tell me a normal couple has, or we're having too much sex, or not the right kind of sex. So. I think about keeping it alive, it's like, what do you mean by alive? Like, is alive like, you're constantly pouncing on each other all of the time, or is alive just that you're happy and you're satisfied with your situation? That was rambly! Next advice question. Ever felt not productive? What did you do? Yes, I often have days where I'm just like, meh, not really feeling it. And there are two strategies that I have in place for this. One is, is this a task that has to get done right now? I have to ask myself that. And is this something that I can do right now? Or is there a different task that I can do right now that doesn't take the kind of brain power motivation? So for instance, if it's like having to write a really important email, or if it's like doing book writing, or something that requires your brain to like really, really think, and I'm just not motivated to do it, I might just skip that task and try and do it another day. However, if it's something that I have to do and I can do because it uses a different kind of brain power, I don't know, a bit more of like a monotonous task where I like scheduled it in and then I just do it and I don't really have to think that much, it just has to get done. I try and do those ones when I'm not really feeling productive. So then I feel like I've achieved something. Is this making any sense? The second thing that I do is just, I allow that feeling to exist and sometimes I have to just write that day off or that afternoon off or that morning off or whatever it is. Um, I just have to go, 
I am not feeling it today, nothing is working, I am not motivated at all. And so instead of staring at my computer screen and willing myself to be motivated and just feeling more and more crap about it, I just step away, go for a walk, read a book, watch some TV, I don't know, I just like step away, do something else. And then maybe I'll feel motivated to come back to it later, but that's not what I'm planning on doing. I plan on just like writing that day off. I know that I'm very lucky because I'm freelance so I can do that, but then it does sometimes mean that the rest of that week I have more work to do. So it's about balancing that, but sometimes I just have to write a day off because I'm just like, nope, it's gonna be a struggle today. And then actually the next day I wake up super motivated and I managed to get everything that I planned to do that day and everything that I skipped the day before. So more advice. Best tips for freelancing. I think you really need to know yourself. When do you work best? How do you work best? What distracts you? What is your go-to procrastination technique? Like know yourself, know all of those things and then create a workspace that is best suited for you and create a work routine that is best suited for you and then stick to it. <laughs> then show up and do the work. <laughs> Did you go to uni? Tips for surviving first year. Holy shit, this feels like so long ago. Yes, I did go to uni. I went to the University of Birmingham and I studied history. I graduated in 2014. So my first year was 2011 slash 2012. So long ago. My tips for surviving first year is literally to say yes to everything within reason. Obviously like say no to things you don't wanna do. But, but just like throw yourself into things. If something takes your interest, just like go to that event do that club thing, talk to people, walk around campus. Of course you're gonna walk around campus, fuck's sake, Hannah, I'm so warm. First year is the year to literally throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. You can refine down your group of friends and all of your hobbies and your activities in second and third year when the work really counts and you need to spend a bit more time in the library. But first year, just like do whatever the fuck you want. Not do whatever, you know what I mean. Okay, we are on to give Hannah a crisis. This is gonna be really great seeing as I'm overheating in this jumper right now. <laughs> Why do you ask these questions that make me freak the fuck out? Like, this had to be its own category. There are six questions in this category. Anyway, how do you personally quantify success? Off to a great start. I definitely fall victim to, I don't know when I will ever feel successful because as soon as I hit one milestone, I am eyeballing the next. But if you forced me to, I would say I am successful now. Mona just did a fart. But I want more, I want more. I wanna be where the people are. No. <laughs> Maybe because I'm constantly striving for more. Maybe real success for me would be just to be happy with what I've got. Ah! Question two, how do you deal with imposter syndrome? I don't deal. My imposter syndrome mostly comes in sex education spaces. I'm like, who am I though? What qualifications do I have? I have one now, well, two. If my degree counts, because I specialize in sexual history, and then I got my sex and relationships training qualification recently, that came through. So I do have, so yeah, I do have some qualifications, but I definitely also went and got that sex and relationships training qualification because I have imposter syndrome. <sighs> anyway, it'll never be enough. How do you deal with imposter syndrome? I don't know, list your achievements in your head, constantly talk to yourself in the mirror, like you is smart, you is, what was it? You is kind, you is smart, you is important. Do you plan to write another book? Not right now, I literally have no ideas about what that book would be. But I know that in this industry, it's like, when's the next book? How are you gonna stay relevant? People aren't gonna keep inviting you back to do speaking engagements to promote an old book. You need a new book to do more speaking and going to events and being relevant and the press talking about you. Welcome to Hannah Has a Crisis. Those aren't reasons to write a book though. So hence why I'm not currently planning on writing a book. Buy my other books, doing it in the Hormone Diaries. Thanks. Do you find it odd to be an online sex educator knowing your parents can see it? <clears throat> my parents are pretty good at self-censoring which videos of mine they watch and which they don't watch. My um, grandparents, that's a different story. And apparently Dan's granny also watched one of my videos recently. I don't know, she referenced one. So I don't know how many others she's watched or if it's just that one. Cool, 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 cool. 
Do you plan on being an influencer forever? If not, any career plans for after? Um, can one ever plan on being anything forever? Let's leave it at that. Would you move out of London someday? Potentially. However, I'm a city gal and I'm spoilt by how cool and amazing and just how brilliant London is. So there aren't that many places that I would enjoy. <laughs> but also, London is expensive and Dan and I want to have kids and getting on the tube with children? Ah, oh, No thank you. So we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> but then I would miss London and all my friends. And then I would have to like go somewhere else and make new friends. Okay, we're moving out of Hannah has a crisis now and we're going on to some more friendly questions. Lifestyle topic. Woo, 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 woo. What's your natural hair color and what colors have you had it in the past? This on top is my natural hair color. This blondy stuff at the bottom is not. However, this blondy stuff in the bottom is how I feel on the inside. So, you know, if how you feel on the inside is your nature, then this hair color is my natural color. Colors I've had it in the past. I've dyed it weird, reddy, purple the situations. Dark brown. Between like 14 and 18, I would just dye my hair like dark, dark brown. I look back on those pictures and I'm like, why? How do you like your eggs? I like my eggs poached, except I don't actually know how to poach an egg. Are you going to get more geckos? Dan wants another gecko, but we're waiting to confirm if Mustard is a boy or a girl, because if she's a girl, then we can get another one because a lady gecko and a lady gecko would be fine and a lady gecko and a boy gecko would be fine but if you put in two boy geckos uh -uh, and you don't actually know what the sex of a gecko is until they're like a year old and they either grow balls or not. Mustard has an Instagram that I haven't updated in ages but you can follow her if you like. Where is your watch from? Great question. I'm always wearing an analog watch. It was a birthday present years ago. Skagen. Skagen? Skagen. I don't even know. It doesn't have numbers on it. Can I even tell the time? Travel plans for 2020. Mm, I'm going to Disney World <laughs> at the end of January. Very excited. Eight day girls Disney World trip plus Universal plus Kennedy Space Center. Very excited. Then I'm going on a work trip in February to Istanbul. And then I'm going to Ireland for Mel's wedding. Very excited about that. I'm a bridesmaid. <laughs> um, what other travel plans do we have? Honeymoon, we booked that recently. And that will lead us on shortly to the wedding section. Yeah, what other 20, 20 plan, travel plans do I have? That's it at the moment. We shall see. More will arise. Potentially going to the US in May, but that depends on a few things that I don't know about yet, so. We shall see. Political compass. I haven't done this in ages, and so I basically redid the quiz test for the political compass, which basically it plots your political leanings along economic scale, so like right to left, and then also social, so authoritarian and libertarian. And no surprises, this is my political compass. I am left and I'm a libertarian. No surprises there. Culture slash entertainment category. What are you excited to read slash watch in 2020? I'm actually planning a video that will be out next week on this channel, which is gonna be about my 2020 reading priorities. So stay tuned for the answer to that question. And in terms of watching, I'm very excited for season two of Sex Education. And that's coming out imminently at the beginning this year. Oh my God, when this video comes out, it's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> and then I, I'm not sure what other TV is happening the rest of the year. Big Mouth season three, season four, new Big Mouth, anything. Favorite book of all time. So I don't know if I actually have a true answer to this question. I just have the book that I give as my answer to that question, which is The Book Thief, which I've looked on my shelf and I do not have a physical copy of it. So that's cool. I think I've, have I read it twice? Which is saying a lot for me. I don't really do rereads that much, but I adore The Book Thief. Favorite Taylor Swift song and why? Story of Us, don't know why. 
it's a banger. What book are you currently reading? It's a reread. I'm currently reading The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman. And this is a library book. So I'm sticking to my New Year's resolutions already. Look at this beautiful library book. Mm -mm -mm. Favorite song from Hamilton, Satisfied. Obviously. Second favorite, wait for it. Third favorite, I haven't thought that far ahead. Okay, guys, you made it. Well done. You endured all of those questions. And now we're getting to the bit that most of you, at least from the quantity of questions that I got about it, this is what you wanna know about. The wedding and my relationship. And I will share with you as much as I want to share. How's wedding planning going? It's going great. Dan and I are very decisive people, it seems. We know what we want. We also just don't care about not inviting lots of people. <laughs> Doing the guest list was a piece of cake, basically, is what I'm saying. I know people stress about it, but we were like, we want these people there, that's it. Easy. We have the venue slash venues. Oh, actually one of them we don't quite have yet, but they said we could book in January, so need to book that. We're currently working on booking the food. Um, I've ordered my wedding dress. I don't know, it's going well. I'm really happy. How traditional will your wedding be? Not super traditional. It's gonna be a secular wedding. I'm not wearing a white dress. There's not gonna be a first dance. The ceremony itself is very, very small. And then it's basically a party. Not super traditional, I think. I don't know. Will we get to see your dress? Yes, probably, but maybe after the wedding. Although it will be really difficult to not take pictures and share it as soon as I see it, but I'll just, send them to my friends. How did you and Dan meet? Great question, because I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, because until we actually got engaged, we were keeping his identity a secret. But he is the brother of one of my friends, who also is a YouTuber slash musician. And we met at her birthday party. Did you always see yourself in a committed monogamous relationship one day? Yes, I did. And I don't know whether that's because that's what I've always wanted or that was the story that was sold to me since I was a little girl and that was like what normal relationships were and that was like what you did in life. But it suits me well, so not complaining. What are the pros and cons of living with your partner? Pros, you get to see them every day. They're the person who you know the best in the world, they know you the best in the world. So ideally, living together, is really easy because you get on really well and you like doing some of the same things together, but you also respect each other's boundaries and spaces and you can do your own thing without feeling guilty about not spending time with them. That's great. Cons, you see all of the nasty stuff. Dan's farts, I swear to God, are so disgusting. Thank you for all of your questions. I hope I satisfied your curiosity in some way. Make sure you're following me on Instagram so you have the chance to ask a question the next time I do one of these. And also do please check out the special offer that I'm currently running on my Patreon if you are interested in supporting the work that I do online and in life. Thanks so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd be curious to hear what your political compass is. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can do the test for it. Like, are we all left libertarians on this channel? Like, is this a true echo chamber? Or do we have some outliers? Be interested to know. And make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.